Amen? We will not realize the new creation that we are. We will not realize this new life that, is, that we're living in blindly. Because we can be called Christians and still live blindly. We can be called born again believers, church going, choir singing, hand clapping, whatever you want to call it, and still be blind. Because so, there is our part by which we press into Christ. And it does not happen by simply coming to church. It happens on a daily, regular engagement, intimacy with Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen for that? If to, to enjoy the fullness of God, man, you got to get into His presence. Do you hear me? Man, I, honestly, uh, even the songs, as we come into His presence, it's a beautiful song, but we shouldn't be coming into His presence. We should be always in His presence. Do you hear me? It has to be an everyday thing. But until we experience that, yes, that is the appropriate song. Until we experience the presence of God on a daily basis, no longer a slave to fear, right? Look at that. It's been severed, the tie to this life, and now your true life, say true life. True life. It's hidden away in God, in Christ. Keep going. And as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, who you really are will also be? Aha! So it's no longer self-esteem. It is a God-esteem. It's no longer about puffing yourself up. It's about your identity in him. So just as Christ himself is seen for who he really is, do you realize that's the meaning of the glory of God in Greek? It means to see Christ. I'll deal with that in a minute. I have, I, I have an analogy, but... It means to see God for who he really is, and then he reveals to you who you really are in him. Nobody in this world can tell you of who you are, what child you are. Let me tell you something. You are adopted in the family of God. You have a father. The reason Jesus came and died, shed his blood, and was beaten on your behalf and took sin on him is so that you can have a father. How many of you are enjoying the Heavenly Father today, man? And we owe it all to Jesus for giving us a Father who loves us, who disciplines us, who trains us, who forms us in the palm of His hands. All right? You are now one with Him where? You are now one with Him in His glory. Keep going. Live as one who has... Woo. Okay, let me read that loud but clear. I'll stand right here. What does it say? Live as one who has... Died. Stop. What does it say again? Live as one who has... Died. To every form of sexual sin and impurity. Live as one who died to... Whoa. Whoa. Are you meant to live a long life? Why is that? It's in God's word, man. Long life is meant for his children. Sure, there are many that have died and gone. I know. I grieve. I grieve for my spiritual dad who died. We were fighting. We prayed. I was not fighting with him. I was fighting for him. But yet he died. But that does not change the fact that the Bible says long life is still mine. It's still yours. Don't let experiences change what the word says. The word is still the same. What needs to change is our hearts towards him. Believing in him. For those that have died, let me tell you, they're at rest. They're at peace. They're enjoying the presence of God. I even looked at my spiritual dad and said, I'm a little jealous, but please say hi to my dad. His name is Matthew in heaven. <laughs> Why? Because he gets to sing with the angels. Man, I tell you. Let me tell you, death has no power. As a child of God, all that is is you've been translated into heaven. That's it. It has taken you down at all. Live as one who died to diseases and desires for forbidden things including the desire for wealth, which is the essence of? 
And remember, it's not money that's the issue. It's the love of money. That's the difference. That is root of all evil. Okay, it's the love. When you live in these vices, you ignite the anger of God against these acts of disobedience. Keep going. That's how you once behaved, characterized by your evil deeds. But now it's time to eliminate them from your lives once and for all. Anger, fits of rage, all forms of hatred, cursing, filthy speech, keep going, and lying. Laying aside your old, say this out loud, Adam self with this masquerade and disguise. Wow. For you have acquired new creation life, which is continually being renewed. Say continually being renewed. One more time, continually being renewed to the likeness of him who created you. Man, does someone have a cross I could borrow? Anyone carry a cross? I carry the cross in my heart. <laughs> if not, that's okay. Listen, before Christ, you were, oh, for a cross. I, I, I'll make sure it's clean. It's only Plato. Or, or, that's okay, that's okay, Paul, that's okay. I got, <laughs> wow, that is cool. Well, I might actually use that as an analogy even. Okay, oh, the beautiful cross. You know why? Because it does reveal what he did. Listen, in the natural realm, let's say this is your body, okay, it's just clay. How many of you know, Bible says dust to dust, we are made of. So how many of you know when you're clay, you're moldable? Okay? I don't care how stubborn you are, your mindset is still moldable. You know, people say, oh, when you're 60, you just make up your mind. I've seen six people, six-year-olds still being able to be molded. Why? Because no matter, no matter where you go, whatever you hear, it molds your thinking, it molds your belief. Do you hear me, church? You're constantly molded by the natural realm. But the moment you receive Christ, okay, this mold is seated now with God, right here. <laughs> but that's not where we just stop and be like, okay, I got a seat in, in, the VIP, uh, in the VIP area, now I'm good. No. Do you want to know the person who gave you the VIP seat? I do. Do you want to know the person who gave you the VIP seat? I'm happy to get the VIP seat, but I want to get to know the one who gave me the why. Because that's the relationship I want. I don't want the relationship with the seat. I want to have a relationship with the person who gave me that. See, that's the thing. Oftentimes, we see God's hand, but we don't see his face. Can I say that again? Oftentimes, we see God's hand. Hand to provide hand to heal, hand to deliver, hand to this. But little do we find out he wants us to seek him face to face. We seek his hand, but we forget he's got a beautiful face. If the only thing my children care about me was my wallet, we don't have a relationship. Do you hear me? I want my kids to know me face to face. I want my wife to know me face to face. I want to know her face to face. Same thing with God. He wants to know him face to face. And when we begin to press into his presence, okay, here's a cross. I'll make sure it's not dirty. Here, I'll use the back of this. Okay, right now it's just clay. It's being molded. But when we press into him, and this is the work of the Spirit. He's constantly molding us into the image of God. Okay, I'm doing my best to make this look as clear as possible. But what do you see? A cross. What do you see? What do you see? What do you see, John? What do you guys see? It's a cross. That's the image that God the Father is working in you and through you so that you can be like him. Can we give God a hand for that? Hey, I dropped that somewhere. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are the potter, I am the clay. Mold me and make me. 
after thy will. While I am waiting, yielded and still, then will we sing. Have thine own way, Lord. Have thine own way. This is where we forget the lyrics. <laughs> I am the clay. Mow me and make me have thy will. Still. Look at that. Yielded and. You know, the clay has to be still in the potter's hand. And it's the potter that does the work that molds you. It's like, now you're my child. You're my baby. You're my responsibility. Let me take you and form you into the image of my son. Man, and then the world will know Jesus is real. All right? For you have been a quiet new creation life, which is continually being renewed into the likeness of the one who created you, giving you the full revelation of I want the full revelation of God. Not teeny bits. I want it full. Keep going. In this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference. Or, or your ethnicity, your education, or economic status, they matter nothing. For it is Christ that means... Does Christ mean everything to you, church? This is not Pastor Bob's idea. This is straight from Scripture. Different version, so we can have better understanding what Bible is saying. In this new creation life, your nationality makes no difference, or your ethnicity, education, or economic status. They matter. Say it out loud. Nothing. For it is Christ that means everything, as He lives in every one of us. The famous movie of Jerry Maguire, where Jerry is looking at his uh, girlfriend, who I can't remember the name right now, but it's um, played by a famous actress. How they look at each other and they say, you complete me. It's actually between you and God that God completes you and you complete him. That's what the Bible says about being in the fullness of God. Fullness. And having that fullness inside of you, he completes you. Your wife does not complete you. Your friends does not complete you. Your husband does not complete you. No one will complete you except, all right, except God. Look at 1 John 1, 7. 1 John 1, 7. Everyone out loud, but if we are living in the, as God is in the, no difference there. Say one more time. If we are living in the light, as God is in the, in the light, then we have fellowship with each other. So don't call this fellowship if you and God are in two different lights. <laughs> Do you hear me? This is what the Bible says, man. We have fellowship with each other when we live in the light as God is in the... I'm going to ask you, what light are you following? <laughs> Which light, in fact, whatever is not the light of God is darkness anyways. So you need to ask yourself, if you call it light and God is not in it, it is darkness. So you need to ask yourself, what darkness am I walking in? Because if we are in the light as He is in the light, then we have fellowship with one another. If not, don't call it fellowship. Hey, this same word is challenging my heart. Same thing. Every day I've got to ask, am I walking in the light of God? Am I walking in His light so I'm able to have fellowship with my brothers and sisters? 
Amen? Even the Bible says, I mean, Jesus said this, the world will know that you are my disciples when you love. Jesus' prayer was, I am not praying for this world. I am praying for my disciples. You know why? We have a lot to pray for on our behalf. <laughs> and because of that, our job is to pray for the world. Do you hear me? All right, all right. And just a couple more and we'll finish here. Second Corinthians 1, 1920. Jesus Christ is the Son of God, and He's the one whom sent Timothy, Silas, and I preach to you. And He has never been both a yes and a no. Jesus is not double-minded. You hear me? He's not a yes or a no. He has always and He has always been and always will be for us a resounding. All right? Keep going. For all of God's promises find their yes of fulfillment in Him. And as His yes and our? As His yes and our? Amen. One more time. As His yes and our? Amen. As sin to God, we bring Him glory. Woo! So don't just think that it is simply God saying yes, 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 yes to His promises. We also have to respond with our amen. You know what amen means? That's right. How can two walk together unless they agree together? In the same way, how do you expect God and you to walk together if you cannot agree with His yes? We want God to say yes to all of the things that we think is the light of God. And no wonder we find ourselves in trouble. No wonder we find ourselves confused. No wonder we live from Monday to Saturday in depression and hoping Sunday will somehow lift you up. No wonder we, we, we are lost and we say, God, you are the lamp and the light. But yet you are not willing to say an amen to God's yes. Man, we just studied in the Tower of Babel where God looked at man and said, his imagination is evil and if he continues, he'll be unstoppable. This is God himself saying this. Don't think just because God says yes, nobody can say no. You can say no to the will of God. And you wonder why. And you wonder why. Excuse my passion, but my heart is for Jesus. My heart is for God. And you wonder why about your life, about anything. When God's promise is yes and our amen, in agreement with God, a sense to God, the Bible says we bring Him glory. We bring Him glory. Glory. One more verse here, 2 Corinthians 3.18. We can all draw, draw close to him with the veil removed from our... All right? And with no veil, we all become like mirrors. You remember what I said? When Jesus comes back, he's not coming back for an East Indian bride. He's looking at his own reflection when he looks at you. He got to see you in him and him in you. So when he comes back, he's not coming back for a bride made of, of a culture that is corrupt. He's looking at the bride and says, is my son a reflection of you? Are you reflecting my son? All of us are going to be looking like a mirror in front of him and he's going to see, is my son being reflected? He's not going to ask what curry you ate did you wear a sari? Did you? He's not. He's, listen. We are being formed in the image of who? Christ. So why would God come back for anything else? Why would he come back for anything else except Christ? That's why we are called the bride of. We are called the bride of. We are called the bride of. Which means we belong to Him. Which means we reflect Him. Which means we, our words 
everything, our action, is all Him. Oh, may we die a thousand deaths in our flesh so that the life of the Spirit can rise up within us. Jesus! Oh, my Lord. Whew. And with no veil, veil, we all become like mirrors who brightly reflect the glory of the Lord Jesus. Keep going. We are being transfigured. Say transfigured. Into his very image as we move from one brighter level of glory to another. Church, we are not meant to stay in glory number one. We're meant to keep going to glory number two. Number three, number four, number five, number six, a thirtyfold, a sixtyfold, a hundredfold, man to the point where you can declare what the apostle Paul says, I no longer live, but Christ lives inside of me. This life I now live, I live by faith in the Son of God. That has got to be our testimony. Oh Lord, help us to be pressed into Christ. That all that people will see is Christ in us. Jesus. And man, transfigured. Do you remember the uh, transfigur trans transfiguration of Jesus on that mountain? That's the same word. That's the same word. To be transfigured into his very image. As we move from one bright level of glory to another. And this glorious transfiguration comes from the Lord who is what? My God, you cannot live this life without the Holy Spirit, church. No, no, no. I don't care what theological education you got. I don't care if you read the Bible 66 times, but without the Holy Spirit, it's all dead. The Bible says the letter kills, but the Spirit gives life. When you discern things, you discern things with the Word and the Spirit. We follow the Holy Spirit. Let's pray. Let's stand up and pray. I want this to be our prayer. Proverbs 4, 10 20 to 27. Sometimes our own fleshly prayer don't, don't work. So just, let's just use scripture. Oh, not that video. You're really fast. <laughs> Thank you. You're doing a good job. You can even say daughter as well, all right? Ready? My son and daughter, if you will take the time to stop and listen to me. Even set foot. Stay away from her. Don't even go there. Drop. For the lovers of God walk on the highway of light. And their way shines brighter and brighter until they bring forth the perfect day. But the wicked walk in thick darkness. Those who travel in fog and yet don't have a clue why they keep stumbling. Listen carefully, my dear child, to everything that I teach you and pay attention to all that I Fill your thoughts with my words until they penetrate deep into your spirit. Then as you unwrap my words, they will impart true life and radiant health into the very core of your being. So above all, guard the affections of your heart 
for the effect all that you want. Pay attention to the welfare of your innermost being, for from there flows the wellspring of life. Avoid dishonest speech and pretentious words. Be free from using perverse words no matter what. Set your gaze on the path before you with fixed purpose. Looking straight ahead, ignore life's distractions. Watch where you're going. Stick to the path of truth and the road will be safe and smooth before you. Don't allow yourself to be sidetracked for even a moment or take the detour. Amen. Amen. Can we get the communion ready, please? Worship team, come on up. Thank you, Jesus. Every eye closed. Why we do that is so that the eyes of your heart can be opened to Jesus. It's good to close your eyes sometimes. <laughs> so that where Jesus abides in your heart, you can see him clearly. You can see him clearly. Oh, Jesus. Oh, Jesus. If you haven't, let me just change that. If you want to receive the Father, the love of the Father right now, could you put your hand up? The love of the Father. You, you've not known God before. And perhaps you have walked as a Christian, but you said, man, God, I need to experience and know the love of my Heavenly Father. If that is you, put your hand up. If that is you, you can put your hand up and say, God, I want to know you and I'm coming to your son, Jesus, right now. If you haven't received Jesus into your life, make today that day. Not so that you can get into heaven, but so that heaven can get into you and you can experience everything that God has promised and said, yes, eternal life is yours. Yes, my love is for you. Yes, you are my child. Yes, you are covered in my righteousness. Yes, you stand holy before me. Yes, you are seated next to me. Yes, you have my mind. So you know what I think. Yes, when you pray, I will answer. Yes, when you lay your hands on the sick, people will be healed. Yes, you can go out and preach the gospel because I am with you. Yes, my name is Emmanuel, God with us. I will never leave you, nor forsake. If you want to experience this today, put your hand up. Put your hand up. Put your hand up. Even if you have been going to church and just going to church and doing that religious act, but today you say, God, I'm done with the religious act. I want to have a relationship. God, I've been seeking your hand, but I want to now actually seek your face. I want to seek your face. Like, let today be that day, please. Let today be that day. Let today be that day. If that's you, can you say, Father, I come to you. I receive Jesus in my life. Thank you for forgiving me and cleansing me from all my sin. Thank you for giving me a new identity that I am his child and he is my father. I come to you. Jesus is my Lord. Jesus is my Lord. God, mold me, make me, yielded and still into your will. In Jesus' name. As we get ready for the communion, let me just explain something to you. Communion is a holy table, but it's also a welcoming table where the Bible says there's no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. If you're feeling condemnation right now, I want to tell you that's not God. But if there's a place in you that says, man, but I need to turn to God and you repent, 
Do it now. Say, God, I repent. I repent. I'm changing my mind. I'm walking away from the sinful world and I'm coming to you, God. I'm coming to you. The Father's inviting you to partake in this table. Jesus said, when you do this, you do this in remembrance of me, of what I did, what I accomplished. And this table is also declaring the gospel to the world, to your neighbor. So when you take the bread, remember the bread is the body of Christ that was broken for you. When you pick up the wafer, when you go to your uh, seat, just, just wait for all of us. As in the quietness, we will break the wafer together and just pay attention to the, cr the crackling sound of the wafer and imagine the body of Christ being broken 10 times louder than that. And then when you take the cup, wait for all of us. As we take the cup together, which represents the blood of Jesus. He took our death sentence and gave us life sentence. He took away all our sins and disease and sickness and washed us clean and made us pure and righteous before Him. That is what you're drinking. The blood of Jesus and the body of Christ. When the worship teams begin to sing this beautiful song, come on up, starting from the back, and let's partake in this table.